Yo, what's up guys, Shinjinkin Inc. here. This video is all about your questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. I asked you last week to send me some questions, so I'm going to answer them all. All of them. I don't think I saw any that were really... It's trolly. Good job, guys. Proud of you. Victor Baxter, can you call me? And he tries to convince me. By the way, I hate Perfect Legend just like you. I don't hate Perfect Legend, by the way. Uh, we're buddies. We just... He just gets salty. <laughs> uh, Aramande Hasashi says, What made you love Quan? Uh, I just love Quan because of the Mortal Kombat 9 story mode. If you ever did that, he was such a boss. He didn't care about anything. He just went and took everything for himself and deceived one guy and befriended another and then backstabbed him and then it was <laughs> it's so cool. Uh, unfortunately in MKX he turned out to be a bit of a wimp, kinda getting his ass kicked every turn. And um till eventually he died. But he died with a smile on his face. That is worth noting. So he may be back. Do you think Sky Drop should be buffed a little? Mm, it'd be nice, but I don't think he needs it. Because that would make Summoner have a really good wake-up. And that shouldn't happen. <laughs> uh, how is it being a single dad? Like, how hard is it? It is probably the hardest thing that you have to do in your life. If, hopefully, you know, maybe you guys don't have to go down that road. But, um, just not really having someone always there to help. And, you know, working as, as a team, you know, you have to be mom and dad. And provide the love and the money and the support. And emotionally, physically, and everything like that, and it's, uh, it's really hard to do both, but I try my best, and I know I'm not perfect in all areas, but, you know, my son's happy and healthy, and he's, he seems to love me, so that's, that's all I care about. I must be doing something right. Um, but how long did it say, TLP Legion, how long did it take you to achieve your level of gameplay? Uh, about 11 years. <laughs> Uh, I've actually been playing Mortal Kombat since the arcades back in 1992, 91, when it first came out. There was a Mortal Kombat arcade down at the bowling alley by my house, and that's where I started playing it. Competitively, we would all, well, not competitively, we would, I was like five, but we would all line up and give um, this one kid who knew the fatalities, we just put on our quarters and let him beat us so we could watch the fatalities. And then I played Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, and I, a little bit of Mortal Kombat 4, and then I dropped off until Deception came out, and then I got hooked on Deception uh, in 2004, and that's when I really started playing competitively and tried to actually get good. Um, and now I'm here, I guess, so it took me a long time to be mediocre. <laughs> 17th place forever. Uh, what tourney are you going to next? Legion asked as well. Uh, I'm not sure. I always do the locals in Washington, try to do those every month might not make Decembers or Januaries because we're having really bad weather on the roads, but uh, as far as major events, I'll be hopefully attending Northwest Majors, barring any um, circumstances or anything, and Evo, probably. And I usually try and do one more in there, but it will all depend on what happens this year, so. If you could be any animal, what animal would you be? This is the Vigokan. I would be a puffin, just because that's such a fun word to say. Puffin. Hey, look at me. I'm a puffin. <laughs> uh, Alex asks, What was the most memorable moment for you in competitive MK history? Uh, most memorable moment would be... Probably my set versus X-Blades, SCR 2012. Um, when I picked Baraka... Uh, even though I lost the set, I just had so much fun playing. No one had ever seen a Baraka play like that before. And I beat him with all, I beat him one game using pretty much nothing but the Blade Spark, and uh, it was <laughs> it was really hype. You should search it up on YouTube. I went by Dark Dink for that tournament. Uh, STB Dark Dink versus X Blades SCR 2012. The the crowd went wild when I won. It was such a hype match. Uh, da, da, da. Where did the name Shujinki Dink came from? Um, it came from when I first started playing back in 2004. Um, There's a character named Shujinko, and somebody else picked Shujinko at the same time that I picked Shujinko. 
And I went to say, oh, what a quinky dink. We both picked Shujinko. But I said, oh, what a Shujinki dink. And then I stopped and I laughed and laughed and then I just quit and changed my gamer tag <laughs> immediately to that because I thought it was too good. <laughs> uh, Eric asks, where do you work? I work at a place called Cloverdale Paint. It is a paint store. I mix paint. I make colors. If you bring me a color, I can make, I can make it. You know, I'm, it's a mix different colorants. You mix black. You mix red and yellow and green, and you mix them all together. You have to know how your primary colors and stuff work, and how to cancel colors out. Like if I have a color that's too green, I need it to be more gray, and I put in some red because the red will kill the green and make it more of a gray color. I don't know. It's boring stuff, but I find it really interesting because I love colors. It's like I like stuff like that. It interests me. It's cool. Uh, Miss Baddest Chick asks, how old are you, Dink? Old enough to party. <laughs> are you old enough to get that reference? <laughs> uh, I'm 28. 28 years old. I actually just had my birthday November 7th of this month. So yay, go me. Uh, Devil Trigger Dante says, first question, any tips doing the 42122 into Bat Spark or in Cancel 141? Yes, that's a tricky one. Um, you can actually enter the full string, and before he actually finishes, like hits the last two, that's when you want the, bar the Bat Spark to go, and then you run forward. It's kind of tricky timing, but yeah, the key thing is just let the Bat Spark go before he finishes his combo, and it'll hit him on the way up. If you do it after, it'll drop the combo. Favorite bands, any bands you've seen live? Yeah, um, favorite bands, uh, Our Lady Peace, System of a Down, Avicii. Um, right now I'm on a big Ariana Grande hitch. <laughs> I love my pop music, Taylor Swift. I'm uh, looking at my playlist right now. All-time favorite band of all time, though, kind of linguist, without a doubt. They're a hip-hop band. Um... My brother actually bought me surprise tickets for their concert. They came to town. I live in a pretty small town, so I was super shocked that they actually came. But <laughs> it was it was pretty awesome. One of the best shows that I've seen so far. Uh, live, I've seen Metric. I've seen Billy Talent, Black Eyed Peas. I've seen Our Lady Peace twice. Uh, I saw Young Buck. I saw Chaos. Oh... Uh, and then just a couple smaller shows. I think I saw Theory of a Dead Man, the sideshow. Um, Snoop Dogg. I saw Snoop Dogg. Uh, that's pretty much all I can remember. Do I like anime? No, I don't like anime. Oh, Dante's got so many questions here, guys. He totally just outshined everybody with a question. He just took it to the next level. This is like a Q&A here. <laughs> Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, or PC? Uh, Xbox or PlayStation, I guess. I don't know, that's a hard one. Because I was, I loved Xbox before the next gen, like the current gen we have right now, the previous gen. I have the 360 over PS3 for sure. But then now I'm on PS4 over Xbox. I think it's way better, but... And Nintendo, I always respect Nintendo because they're family-friendly, and they've stayed that way, so that's really cool. And PC just seems you could, there's so much cool stuff you can do with it, that how do you eliminate that, right? It seems to run the best out of everything, so. That's it. Uh, I just wanted to say you're great. I picked up Quan because I saw you fighting on Pick of the Hut stream, and you're awesome. Oh, you're the man. I inspired another one. Another successful Quan child joins the Quan Chi family. Uh, Ian Bond says, who would win in a 1v1, you or your son? Um, we play all the time, and we go about even. You'd be surprised. His uncle came over last night and challenged him to a game, and he got pleasantly surprised. <laughs> We've been training him well. Turtle Village. How do you think Summoner should be nerfed? I don't think he should be nerfed. And no, I'm not downplaying or trolling. Well, you can call it downplaying. I don't care. <laughs> but I think he's fine. His defense sucks. He's got great offense. He's just one of the best players and characters in the game. Someone's got to be there. Uh, you don't really see Quans dominating the tournament scene. Um, there's only like three Quans that really do well at majors, so I don't think there's anything to worry about. Online is kind of a joke, but <laughs> it's online. Online in general is kind of a joke. Uh, what do you think about block breakers, and what do you think should be done about them, if anything? That's really hard to say, because a lot of the cast could really use like it just being one bar, 
But then you look at the top tier, and if you give top tier characters like Tanya and Lau and stuff like that who just build meter like crazy and they have that one bar, then it's like, yeah, it doesn't really matter to them, you know? They build a bar back like it's nothing, so um, if they, if I had to choose one thing to do to that to make it useful, I would say just remove the fact that it takes your stamina. It shouldn't take your stamina. Two bars is enough, but two bars and then your stamina? I think that's kind of, eh. Especially if you're like Devor or something, because who needs their stamina to even freaking move? So that's what I would do. Was it just Quan's personality that led you to becoming the Quan father? Or was gameplay also a factor? Yeah, it was a combination of both, I guess. In Mortal Kombat 9, I was known for my Quan Chi because no one else really played him. It was me and Insuperable. Um, and then someone dubbed me the Quan father one day, and I just took it and ran with it. Quan father and all my loyal Quan children. Dink, what is the toughest, proudest win in your FGC career? Um, what's up there is there's a long story behind it, but between me and Justin Wong, probably at uh, Canada Cup 2012, um, won Mortal Kombat 9 at that event. Um, he actually beat me to win it the year before, so it was a revenge win, and then there was some trash talk in between, but, you know, we're cool now, so it doesn't matter. And then I got to play him again in Mortal Kombat X, and we had the same thing where I beat him and he beat me, so... <laughs> and then he, I don't think he plays anymore, so it ends there. Uh, that was RRR Brian that asked that. Theo Seduth. Hello, Mr. Shijinkadink. How long have you been a fan of the Mortal Kombat franchise? Well, hello, Mr. Theo. I have been a fan of MK, like I mentioned earlier, since the early days, 1991-92, when it first came out, so... Uh, Legion DC, who would you use if Quan Chi wasn't an MKX? Oh, that's a tough question because <laughs> the cast is so bland for me. Uh, other than Quan, I play Devora, Venomous, and Flame Fist Liu Kang, and the really crappy Kobajutsu Tanya. So I probably would have played one of those three. I thought Tremor was a cool idea, so maybe I would have played him. Um... But other than that, you know, I probably would have went with, like, Scorpion or something. Just someone who's an icon of the franchise. Um, it's kind of, it's a, that's a tough question. I don't really know how to answer that. <laughs> Fatality89. Hashtag Bonehawks. Other than Shujinki Dink or Dark Dink, what other names did you think about using or have you used in the past? Uh, I entered um, Northwest Majors 2013 as Mittens. Because you never expect a man named Mittens. <laughs> it's true, you can look it up. Well, that was for Injustice. I played Martian Manhunter. That game made me act in weird ways. <laughs> what was your first Mortal Kombat game? Arcade, 1991. First competitive one was Mortal Kombat Deception. Uh, can you explain the experience for us? Yeah, I think I mentioned about the um, the arcade before. And then Deception was just... You know, I... You know, I was playing online, and it was the first time a game was online, and I could actually interact with other people and talk to other people and kind of figure out what makes them tick and how they get better at these types of games. So that kind of really what got me into it. It's been a hell of a ride watching the community grow. I tell you what, over the last 11 years, it's been nuts. So much has happened. Uh, that's <laughs> that's experience in itself. Story for another day. What are your thoughts on the hashtag Bonehawks? And what do you hope the community grows into? You know, <laughs> the hashtag Bonehawks, I was just so, so happy to see something like that come along. You know, if you don't know what that is, on my stream, you know, I started a stream and, uh, you know, they dubbed the skeletons that come up behind Quan as the Bonehawks. And, you know, that, and the viewers started dubbing themselves the Bonehawks and... You know, now I have the whole Bonehawk community and everyone's so close and together. And, you know, we got the Boss Battle Show. Shoutouts to them, of course, my sponsor. Uh, and they're big supporters of the Bonehawks. They sent out care packages to a lot of them. And it's, it's just... I didn't really expect it to get as big as it did. And the people are all so close and they play all the time. And it's... Uh, <laughs> it means a lot to me that people really, really appreciate that. So, you know, hashtag Bonehawks for life, man. Keep it going. Anyone can be a Bonehawk, man. Israfel, do you love me? Could you learn to love me? <laughs> I don't need to learn. You had me at hello. Oh, you didn't even say hello. You ruined my joke, Israfel. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, uh, 
PK Aurora. Hashtag Bonehawks, he's got that in there too. What tournaments majors are you going to? I answered that already. Also, how about a fan meetup for the OG Bonehawks? Yeah, I think we're going to do it at EVO this year. Um, I think Israfel said he's going. Competitor's going to be going. Boss Battle Tim, Adam Ronan are going. Uh, I'll be there. Um, I think Fatality is going to try and go. We need, like, Morbzy to go. I miss Morbzy. But, yeah, let's... I think so if you want to be in the meetup. Aurora, you should come to Evo, man. Come to Evo. We're all gonna be there. It's gonna be awesome. I know you're far, like really far away from there, but gotta make it, man. I think I have a very serious question. Do you know the Muffin Man? I do know the Muffin Man. Here in Canada, we call it Tim Hortons. Why are you such a chicken? <laughs> I totally forgot about that. I laughed so hard when I read that comment. Some guy came into my stream, and uh, I was just ending it. And he's like, yo, let's play. I'll beat you. And I was like, I'm I'm just heading to bed, man. It's cool. And uh, he's like, why are you such a chicken? And he, <laughs> he just butchered the spelling of it. just like C-H-I-K-N. So that <laughs> it's just this ongoing joke that, so why are you such a chicken? Don't be a chicken, brah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that was Chase that uh, that said that. Imaginary Puppets asked about the Muffin Man. Uh, oh, Israfel also asked, FGC or otherwise, what's your greatest accomplishment? I'll go with the otherwise part. Probably the biggest thing I accomplished in life. Uh, I was extremely overweight at one point, about 300 pounds. And I joined MMA... And I trained in MMA for about two years. Within about nine months of that, I probably lost about 85 pounds. Got down to 215. I was so proud of myself. I just trained really hard every week. Uh, you know, two or three times a week was all I needed and just kind of eliminated certain things in my diet. And then I, uh, you know, I was able to to lose all that weight. Now, uh, you know, now my situation's a bit different. Uh, since, you know, single dad on my own these days, so I don't have the time to train anymore, and it really sucks, because I wish I did, because I just loved it so much. It's just something invigorating about getting punched in the face. I don't know what it is, but I love it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dorian Doyle, can you do a Quan Chi tutorial video, at least for the Vortex? I did one already. I'll link it in the description. So check it out. <laughs> it's not the Vortex. It's the Blender. Hell yeah, the Blender. Evil Butterfly says, what character gives you the most trouble to play against? Uh, Tanya. A really good Tanya is hard to beat. Um... And for some reason, Kotal Khan, I have a really hard time with both of those characters. Um, but, I mean, there's other, there's players that make characters, you know, give me a hard time. Like Slayer, Double Flawless, me, SCR, that's no secret. And I thought I knew that matchup, but apparently I didn't, so. Um, just, you know, sometimes it's more of the, the player than the actual character itself, so. Uh, wish list for KP2. I don't care. Just give me Lee Mei and Baraka. Baraka and Lee Mei were the two characters that I used back in 2004 when I first started playing this competitively. Lee Mei was my main character and then Baraka was my secondary character. Baraka was also my main when I played Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, I just think he's just the manliest character. He's just, just made to just kill things loyally. It's <laughs> fucking badass. I love it. Uh... What are your favorite moments in STB since the launch of MKX? Uh, seeing everyone succeed, man. Seeing people go out to events. Um, of course, Mr. Echo, who asked the question, started his own scene. Um, you know, the STB competitor went to his offline event for the first time. Broski went to his first offline event for the first time. Just giving inspiration 
to these guys that really want to go out and compete and you know get their feet wet i that's why i like to compete often you know i i know i don't have the best results i'm not a top player by any means but you know i try to go out there and prove that yes you, you know you can do well and you know just because you train online all the time doesn't mean you can't have success offline and never forget that you know uh, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise because i tr played online for years and years and years and then Everybody told me that I would get blown up in my first tournament that I went to. The first tournament I went to was Devastation of 2011. And there was about 270 entrants. And never having played offline before ever, I got ninth overall. Uh, taking out Tyrant, Alex Valle, um, Showtime, big names like that. So, you know, never let anyone tell you otherwise. You know how good you are. And when you lose, and if you lose... Uh, just be honest with yourself, don't get down on yourself, don't get emo, you don't suck, this or that. Just understand why you lose. That's the biggest part of getting better, is really understanding why you lost. And focusing all of your time on that one area and strengthening it until you no longer lose in that area. Um, and let's be serious here, we all lose from time to time, no matter how good we are. Sonic Fox loses, I lose, DJT loses you know, all these top guys, so unless you're literally winning every single match that you play, which, good luck with that, you always have something to work on, and sometimes you just don't know what it is, so play some play some games with people that you play with all the time, and maybe they see a certain pattern that you're doing all the time, that they're, that they're taking advantage of, you're not mixing it up, your spacing is incorrect, you don't know punishes in certain matchups, there's always something to work on, so just make sure that you're working on that, and, you know, sometimes, especially when you're playing against Quan Chi, you just guess wrong. You know, especially in MKX, it's full of 50-50s. No one can guess right all the time, so don't beat yourself up over losses like that. So, Can you do a matchup tutorial on Kotalcon, Sub-Zero, and Ermac? Yes, I will get right to that. Santino, I will do that as soon as I can. I think that's all the questions. I had one more that was sent to me by PlayStation because he didn't have a YouTube account. Slipknot666 Devil said, when did you first get into MK? answered that before, but I just wanted you to know that I didn't forget about you, buddy, just because you didn't have a YouTube account. I think it's really cool that you're reaching out to me in different ways. That makes me feel really special, so appreciate it. That's all the questions, guys. That's it. That's all I got. Thanks for watching. Hashtag Bonehawks. Um, I'll be back with a tutorial video. I'm going to keep doing this matchup series, you know. Fortunately, I can only do it from Quan Chi's angle because that's all I know. It's just Quan Chi. But I can teach you gaps and stuff about the character that maybe you didn't know that could help you with your own character. So thanks for subscribing, everybody. This is all because we got 500 subscribers, and since in a week we've already got 15 more, which means we're growing. We're growing the Bonehawk army. And, you know, as always, suggestions are always welcome, man. We'll see you guys later in the next video.